Chester, you're a fourth generation family member, chief winemaker and viticulturalist for Darrenburg. Introduce us to the world of Darrenburg because, you know, just coming up the driveway, there is definitely a point of difference. Yeah, yeah, well, there's a lot to introduce, really. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we've got uh, 500 acres of vines here, all organic, biodynamic, uh, we're the largest biodynamic grower in Australia, and we really believe in sustainability in a big way. Being four generations old is part of the family thing that you really get to know how you're going to keep that going for the next generations. <laughs> Our uh, labels, we have like 74 different different wine labels, all with quirky label names. And one day I went, we need to have a building that really captures Darrenburg, uh, the essence of having fun and yeah. quirky label names and whatever. So I decided to build this cube, the Darrenburg Cube, which is based on a you know, Rubik's Cube, of course, because our label names are such a puzzle to work out. What's the most iconic puzzle? A Rubik's Cube. And then I had to fill it up with all this art and quirky stuff yeah. to carry on the whole theme of art and, and really tell the story of yeah. Darrenburg. Well, I certainly haven't seen anything like this at a winery. Is the only place like it in the world? Uh, absolutely. Well, yeah. I suppose there are really interesting wineries around the world mm. that uh, have great architecture. Mm. Not many have gone into that art world as much, yeah. but every art piece in here is to do with wine. From the outside, it just looks like a striking building, but it's a museum inside. Yeah, yeah. We call it the Alternate Realities Museum. <laughs> so, yeah, the good name. <laughs> yeah. Well, because when you have a glass of wine and mm. I have the same wine, then we have a different reality slightly between depending on our perspective and what we've tasted right. before and whatever else. It's subjective uh, like art. Exactly. Yeah. And so all of the art pieces in here have like several meanings, but certainly a wine-related meaning and a very right. Darabeg-specific wine meaning. I love the room where you can smell the different aromas, and which are characteristics from wine. That's such a great idea. And it's yeah. kind of like a learning tool, a teaching tool yeah. for wine tasting. Yeah. And if you might have noticed that there's a tasting bench on the roof, my 20-year-old tasting bench that I tasted, I would have tasted, oh, many tens of thousands of wines. Yeah. So it tastes about 10,000 a year. All the barrels have to be tasted. And uh, and you can see them in groups of, of fermenters. So there's five different fermenters there. They've all got different amounts of flowers, fruit and rocks in them. Yeah. And, and so all of those aromas in there, in that room, which is about 40, are representing the things I'm looking for in mm. the wine. They're on handlebars because when you know how to ride a bike, then you can ne you never forget how to ride a bike. Right. Once you recognise capskin in wine, you never forget it. So that's how it relates back. And it's in flagons because we started with flagons in the 50s. I love that. Everything has a meaning. Everything's linked back to wine. Yeah. And where do you source all your art from? Uh, they're mostly just things I've bought that are interesting mm. that I've put together. Behind me here, yeah. you can see the uh, the lucky lizard there. Yeah, it's a, it's of, a dragon, a bearded dragon. Made of cutlery. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Being in the restaurant, it made sense. Yes. Um, but uh, we have a wine called the Lucky Lizard, which uh, are bearded dragons mm -hmm. that get through the rollers of the crusher and come out alive because the crusher is so gentle. But that one I didn't have to change. But right. uh, some I've uh, added you know, all sorts of things to make a collage to become yeah. more meaningful. Now, talk about the names of your wines. They are eclectic and quirky. Uh, the Dead Arm, is it? Yep. The the Sanosilicophobia cat? Yeah, very Did good. Did I get it right? Yeah, cat. Oh, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the f a fear of an empty glass? Exactly, yeah. We all have that in this industry. Uh, <laughs> Who comes up with the name? Well, that was named after my cat when I grew up called Booze, oh. whose <laughs> real name was Non-Alcoholic Booze. <laughs> so he had said a silicophobia was life because he thought he could drink being called Booze but wasn't allowed to drink because yeah. he's Non-Alcoholic Booze. Right. So, and then I started blending, actually, the pressings of Sagrantino mm -hmm. Know, we've seen so, and I call that the Arthur Zagoraphobic cat. I can't pronounce that one. <laughs> Arthur Zagoraphobia is the fear of being forgotten. Okay. <laughs> and pressings of Sagrantino will not be forgotten because okay. it's satanic. But I had a cat called Audrey Hepburn, yeah. and Audrey was just an ordinary tabby. And so I called her Ordinary instead of Audrey. So she had a complex of being forgotten. Oh, poor kitty cat. <laughs> and does everyone get to name a bottle of wine or is it all left to you? It is actually open for other suggestions, <laughs> but it's funny. They don't, they don't seem to come forward very often. So, no, they're nearly all mine. Fantastic. And it is a family business and you are a member of Australia's First Families of Wine. What does that mean to the business? It's great. I mean, family is obviously a huge part of our mm. business, being four generations old and now 138 years in McLaren Valley in the wine eight. industry, uh, not as Darabin all of that time, mm. we're over 100 as Darabin, but, uh, but before then my great grandfather was a director of Hardy's, treasurer yep. of Hardy's wow. from 1881, yep. and so we've been in it a long time, and, uh, mm. and what we didn't realise was going to happen is that the, it's a great way of the next generation uh, mm. 
catching up and now have all become friends and are really close and yeah. do, do promotional events themselves. It sounds like a pretty tough gig. This, yeah, yeah, it's just uh, another excuse industry. for a drink, isn't it, really? <laughs> it's very fun. I want to be part of it. <laughs> well, soon we will be chatting with your dad and I'm sure he's got some fun stories. Is oh, he anything like you? He's got a lot of stories. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he talks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. oh, more than you. I think, <laughs> wow. yeah, 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 I think you have no problem oh, at all. Oh, great.